Let's talk about uh, fin efficiency, extended surface efficiency. When you're, like I said, when you're designing a fin, uh, you often care a lot about adding this extra material at some cost, whether that's weight, uh, dollar cost, whatever it is. You're adding extra material to your device. Uh, and so you want some way to characterize like how, uh, how effective that extra material is in terms of heat transfer, like they added heat transfer. So let's first look at this, um, the definition of fin efficiency and then kind of sketch out what I mean. Let me just flip this back. All right, so fin efficiency, uh, define, we call this eta fin. Eta fin is the ratio of uh, the heat transfer to the fin uh, divided by the maximum heat transfer from the fin. Uh, so what do I mean? This is a little bit ambiguous. What do I mean? Um, Let's plot the temperature profile. Let's say over here this is T, B, and, over, and down here this is T infinity. So I'm plotting temperature profile as a function of position and just sketching it on top of my fin there. So if you look at most fins, it's going to maybe look something like, like this, right, the temperature profile. I guess it depends, but you can kind of plot it out. Right, so there's, uh, at the, the base, we're right being held at that TB, and then as you go out, it's just losing temperature. It's losing heat to the surroundings. Um, so if you actually looked at the amount of heat that's being lost, right, you're going to have a lot of heat here, a little bit less here, a little less here, right, and so on. So you have this kind of, this profile uh, of heat loss. So this is our queued out as a function of x. So heat loss is changing as a function of x, and it corresponds directly to the temperature uh, difference between the fin and the surroundings. Okay, so uh, what that means is the heat transfer to the fin is what's coming in right at this surface here, right? So in, at this point, so this would be Q dot to the fin. That makes sense. It's just the heat that's going into the fin. The maximum heat transfer for the fin would be if instead of having this temperature profile that dropped, let's imagine that uh, I take this material here and I, and I say uh, conductivity of the material goes way up, right, to, to the point that conductivity is basically infinite. If you have infinite conductivity, then any heat that's added at the base immediately spreads out evenly across. So that would lead to a temperature profile that's just constant at TB the entire way across. If that, if that uh, situation was realized, that's the maximum that this fin could reject. And I'll, I'll maybe say it again slightly differently. So the maximum rate of heat transfer from this fin is the base temperature minus T infinity times the heat transfer coefficient times the entire area of the fin, right? The entire area is held at TB. Um, so we're basically looking at the ratio between these, these two quantities. So we can write this like eta fin is equal to uh, q dot fin divided by uh, q dot fin comma max, which is equal to uh, q dot fin divided by, for this, h bar times a s fin times t b minus t infinity. Um, so a few things. I guess if we assume adiabatic tip here, then AS fin is equal to the perimeter times L. Oops, just happened. Uh, where this distance here is L. If you do not have uh, an adiabatic tip, then you have to include the tip area as well. Um, for the problem you're doing in homework, it's not just H bar, right? It's also radiation. So you have to account for both of them. Okay, then the question remains, like, what about this, this Q dot fin? How do we evaluate that? Um, well, we'll get to that. For now, this is the definition of fin efficiency. Any questions on this concept? Okay. 
Um, so let's figure out how you actually uh, compute fin efficiency. So we went through and developed this temperature expression. Uh, this was the solution for temperature normalized. Uh, we just did that. So let's start from that point and then figure out how you actually uh, compute fin efficiency. So again, let's say uh, Q dot fin uh, is the first thing we need. We need Q dot fin, we need Q dot fin max, right? So Q dot fin, I guess there's, there's like two ways that you could kind of do this. You're trying to figure out the total heat transfer to the fin. You could either you know, do an integral for the entire uh, surface of the fin and integrate all that heat, but it's a lot harder to do integrals than it is to do derivatives. Um, so the other way to do it is just to look at what's crossing that boundary at x equals zero, or what's crossing the boundary into the fin, and just evaluate the conduction equation there. So we can do that um, like this. So q dot fin is minus k ac of the fin dt dx, right? This evaluated at x equals zero. All right, so it's like, it's like the boundary condition equation, but you're just evaluating the heat transfer at this specific location. You have to do it at zero because that's where the, the maximum heat flow is, is occurring. Um, okay, so we can uh, plug in our temperature equation. So minus K AC D DX of this whole thing up here. So I'll just write it quickly, but it's uh, Koch ML one minus X over L over Koch ML times TB minus T infinity plus T infinity evaluated at X equals zero. Okay, wrote that kind of quick. Um, so we take the derivative of that and then uh, the T infinity goes away. Uh, we're left with a slightly different expression, uh, but it looks like, looks like this. So Q dot fin is equal to uh, minus K times AC over uh, Koch ML. Uh, let's see, what did I do here? Q dot fin DX Koch ML. Um, let's see, let's make sure I have my notes right. Q dot fin. Okay, so I think um, all I'm doing right now is pulling out some constants. Not a big fan of what I did here. Let me, let me just um, do this. So I think there's a mistake in my notes and I'm gonna butcher it if I try to go through it right now. What, what I'm gonna do is take the derivative of that, evaluate it at x equals zero, and then get back an expression for q dot fin. Okay, um, kind of the, the final expression here. So let me just erase this part here. Uh, so Q dot fin is equal to K times AC times M times TB minus T infinity. Uh, and then we have here this uh, cinch ML over Koch. ML, um, the minus sign actually, I'm intentionally leaving that off because it happens to cancel out from a minus M that, that would appear. Um, basically this becomes a tanch of ML here, right? Where M is as we previously wrote it. Okay, so it's just operations to get to that. Um, sorry, I, I kind of botched something up there. I'll have to go back and fix that. But basically this is the end result of doing the, the differentiation and then substitution. Um, okay, so this is fine. So where do we go with this? Um, now we need to actually compute fin efficiency. So I'm gonna substitute that, oh, sorry, I'll keep this, so you can see it. I'll substitute that in to our definition of fin efficiency. So eta fin is equal to, uh, let's see, this is the actual Q dot, so K AC uh, remember, M is just the square root of perimeter H bar over K AC. And then we have a TB minus T infinity. And we have a tanch of 
ML. And then in the denominator, we have our maximum, which is h bar times a s times t b minus t infinity. OK. So I'm going through these steps, uh, and I wanted to show you at least this part so you can kind of see something interesting. So the equations for q dot involve temperature. Right? They involve this temperature difference between uh, t b and t infinity. Fin efficiency, if we get to this point, you'll notice the t b minus t infinity, right, that cancels out. So the efficiency of the fin or the performance of a fin in no way depends on the temperature difference. It's entirely geometric and related to the heat transfer coefficients. So as you go through, and if you ever are deriving a fin efficiency for a different situation, if you end up with some temperature relationship, you've, done a, you've made a mistake, right? It, it only depends on the geometry. So we can uh, further consolidate this down now. We get to a point where we have a nice tidy definition. Um, we'll do some cancellation of h bar. Uh, we'll substitute in, uh, we have ac and as, so let's keep track of that. But we have parameters, acs. We can do a further simplification, and it looks like this. Uh, it looks like eta fin is equal to uh, tanch of ml over ml. So I guess you have to take my word that it does that, but um, you could convince yourself too. So this is a really nice tidy definition or a derivation for fin efficiency. But again, remember this is for adiabatic tip, constant cross-sectional area, okay? Um, cool, okay. So that's fin efficiency. I wanna get to a couple other, uh, like three or four more minutes. I wanna get to a couple other important ideas for your homework. Uh, okay. Uh, fin efficiency here, like, so you can plot this out if you, as a function of the fin constant. Um, it's just another way of looking at this. As you increase ML, right, you're adding this kind of extra area that's maybe not entirely at TB. So the, the fin efficiency is, it should drop. So you compute ML, you can, you can anticipate the temperature profile. You can also anticipate what the fin efficiency is going to look like. Um, all right, let's look through this idea of fin resistance. So just like uh, convection resistance or uh, conduction resistance or whatever, we can also write an expression for fin resistance. Um, and the idea is that you have like this heat transfer that is occurring, but because you're not using the entire area of the fin uh, at its full potential for you know, all at TB, there's this like additional impedance associated with, with moving heat through that area. Um, so fin resistance, just the, the kind of main idea behind it is let's write fin, uh, fin efficiency. So eta fin equals q dot fin over h bar a s t b minus t infinity. Solving for q dot fin, uh, that gives us eta fin times h bar times a s times T B minus T infinity. Uh, again, this looks like a driving potential and then some other stuff. So this stuff here can be uh, 1 over R fin. So important things to, to notice here. I will ask you to develop a resistance, a resistance model for the fin array, meaning you're going to have a bunch of fins in parallel and you're gonna have a base, and that base is also exchanging heat with the surroundings. You, to compute the, the fin resistance, it is not that you go out and look at conduction across the fin, and then convection out to the sides or from the tip or whatever. Don't do that, right? Fin efficiency, or the fin resistance, is basically a resistance that corresponds with just that footprint, right? Just the footprint of the, of the fin. So you're just looking at, like, What's that resistance to reject heat from that, from that base? But the area it corresponds to the entire area of the fin that's exposed. All right? So hopefully that makes sense. 
you are not to, to go out and develop a resistance network that's like, you know, in every which direction. It's just through the base of the fin. Um, so let's see. Let's see how far I can get in 20 seconds. So resistance of the fin then is this. It is our fin is equal to 1 over eta fin uh, h bar times a s. Again, for your problem, it's not just h bar, also radiation. Uh, and then uh, we can also rewrite that as 1 over eta fin times h bar times perimeter times l for this problem. Eta fin being a number less than 1 means that the resistance goes up. Right? The less efficient your fin is, the more the, re the resistance that goes up. Okay, I think that's good enough. Uh, we'll cover fin arrays and some concepts there next time. Thanks.